Um, I'm just uh, a random guy. But uh, nobody's uh, random. <laughs> you know, you know, like. Just a guy from a Christian family, you know. My grandfather is a, is a uh, pastor, so. Uh, but I've just wanted to do my thing since when I was a kid. My mom sings as well. Oh. But from for someone that grows up, grow up in a deeper life family, when your grandfather is a, is a pastor, you know, it's so hard. So I had to like um, devise a means to chase my dream Ooh. without not having to um, um, being disrespectful. Or leaving them out of the whole picture. Do you understand? So immediately I entered the university, I saw it as an escape route <laughs> to do what I wanted to do. So um, just a regular guy. When I entered the university, um, I decided to have my own live band. So oh. yeah, that was the first thing I did. I I, I just looked for talent. I first and foremost I spent my school fees on a show. Yeah, I did. Uh, I was in, I was trying to because I left the university before. Oh, that was um, Federal University or YKT. I left because of the situation. What situations? It was boys disturbing me for courtism and stuff? You know, it was rampant. It was just so I just had to leave, and I wasn't I was doing pretty good in that school. So when I entered, because of my love for music, I, I used my school fees for a concert. Oh. Almost like one hundred eighty thousand. I was saying I was talking twenty fourteen. Yeah. That's like three sixty thousand now. Now, you understand? Like twenty fourteen. So I I spent my money on the concert. As a pre degree student, that was the best concert that I ever heard. So I left the school. That was the only concert that was like major in the school, and I really made a lot from it, profit. So I got popular in school. Then I started doing departmental shows, departmental dinners, and stuff, and that was it. Um, I'm twenty four. Well, you look like you're 19. You should have reduced your age, bro. <laughs> yes. Um, I grew up in Accra, but I'm born, oh. I'm born in Ekiti. I'm, like, I'm, I'm from Ekiti. I'm from Ekiti and I grew up in Accra. Bro. Yeah, I grew up in Accra. I attended Aquinas. Ah, uh. Aquinas boys. <laughs> white boys. White, white. <laughs> <laughs> you guys used to be annoying during like... We're always annoying. Oh, you know. <laughs> Always, oh, yeah. we like competition a lot, be it music, be it football, be yeah. anything. We just to be annoying, especially yeah. during match pass. I just think. Yes, <laughs> that was our thing. <laughs> oh, you make one and for a shy and like. Yeah, Akwa is a very, Akwa is a very fun. Season. Yeah, then I think it's no I think longer. It's still fun, but maybe because we are older now. I I don't think the 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 the, the youth or the teenagers now had have the vibe. That we we are when we were in school when it was all rough, we just wanted to you know vibe, <laughs> go to school. Yeah, that was it. But I think for for the younger guys now, it's probably going to be another type of fun. Fun, yeah. I feel like now it's more more of the internet. That's where they have their fun, mm -hmm. the digital, yeah, and stuff. You know, yeah. A lot of young boys are driving, nineteen year old driving G wagon. You know, but Lexus, my Lexus, right? Yes. <laughs> 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 That's the vibe, um, you know. Um, it was actually David that found me. Oh, yeah, it was David that DM that messaged me himself. So when? because um, 2019 October, yeah. But at that particular time, he was not around. So he told me to. He reached out to Obama to have a meeting with me, so that when he comes back, he's going to sign. That was what took. Uh, that was what made my signing took longer, because he was not around. So he wanted to come back before I actually signed. So when it came back January 2020. How did I, David find you? I did a cover, Risky. That was very recent. Yeah, that was like 20, um, 2019. It was the same 2019, 2019, like August. Yeah, me and my brother were just in the house and I just did a cover. I, I posted it, tagged him. Then we slept. We actually posted that in the night. I told my brother, let me just post now. Let's just post it this time. We did. By the time we woke up, I woke up to David's DM. How did that feel? Mm -hmm. That was that. I think I feel like till now that that has been like my the most exciting feeling I ever had. Describe the feeling that you had. When I woke up, I woke up around five a.m. My brother was still sleeping. I rushed to him and showed him that. Like, see, I think, I think David messaged us, but I'm not sure. I, you know, I like using those because 
he knows because he's your brother. Yeah, yeah, he does him. So we're always planning and planning and planning. So when he saw when we saw the message, we're not sure. Because I was like, let's check, let's <laughs> check. <laughs> if we, no, you know, the beauty, our, our, we just saw the message. I, I wasn't even yet to open the message. But I just saw the video message. You know, I just saw it when I opened my Instagram. Immediately I ran to him. I saw we confirmed it was David. Then he asked for the video of the risky cover I did. I sent it to him. And the next day he sent me his number, then posted. Immediately posted. You had the videos no part. Yeah. You were living in Akure. No, 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 no. I was already in Lagos. I moved to Lagos. I just came to Lagos myself 2015. Who were you living with? Nobody. I came. I just came. I lodged. In a hotel? Yeah. Because I was I was actually the um, the local champion thing was not for me anymore. In Akure? Yeah, in in Ocean State. Do you understand? I just wanted to uh, spread my wings and there was no better way to do it. Um yes. You know, I told you I've been I've always been with the mic right from when I was like ten years old. So like that's I knew I, I know I know I was always gonna be in front of camera all my life. So I think I'm prepared for it. Um yeah, that was twenty nineteen December. Yeah. That was when he got back. He went to Abuja first, so when he came back from Abuja, I went to see. Um because DMW is a big family, like you know, and there's just a lot of um artists to push and David is still very busy doing his thing so it's more like oh now that I'm very busy let this person be in charge of this person and we'll work it out from wherever I am so this person is just going to be like your um your guardian while I'm not around to put you through things that you know I'm I'm, I'm, I'm new in the industry I won't lie so Obama has been there he has been David's road manager for a while, so he, un he quite understood the business, and so that was it. Yeah, and we, me and Obama now grew very fond of each other, so it was now to, we were inseparable. Um, I don't, I don't have first impression about people because um, I don't like to judge by how you look or what you, what you. I don't like to judge by how you look or what people tell me i think i just I, I like to be i like to be in the same space i like to get to know who that person is getting to know him is just a it's just a classic is a is a is a is a principled person do you understand he has his principle but at the same time he he hates it when um you're trying to oppress people do you understand so he's on his it stands for what um, justice. He wants to make sure everything is being done right. So, and I don't think anything, there's anything bad in someone having a principle and having a discipline. You feel me? So, yeah, it, it's, it was hard for me because I won't say it was hard, like really hard, but it was hard because for for someone like Obama, you need to um, understand him to work with him. Do you understand? Because um, in the industry, you can't, you can't, but not make. You will always make mistakes. Do you understand? Like it's in, in it's inevitable. So I, 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 there were, there were particular, there were some kind of mistakes I was making at a particular time that I always got going pissed. And I'm like, yo, you need to, you actually need to do the, the, this thing right. If not, you're gonna have a problem. Do you understand? He's the straight man. He tells you to your face. He doesn't know how to keep things to himself. Yeah, that was what he, he listened to morning, day, night. He wakes up with a hippie, sleeps with the hippie. But the song 40 was it made after he passed? No, it was actually made before. But it was not it was not titled 44 at that time. Do you understand? But I didn't want to do like a tribute song. Because you have been corny. You, you said? You have been corny. Do you understand? I didn't want to do like a tribute song because it, it was it was the normal trend. Do you understand? I, and I didn't I didn't see that if he, he left or he died. I, I saw it as if he transcended. So I don't think there was a, there was a need for me to tell him goodbye. Do you understand? So to me, the way his own happened, do you understand? He transcended. But you like, did you see him that day? Yeah, I saw him. He's my boss. He's my my godfather. Is everything to me. So yeah, I did. I saw him, and it just made me realize why my EP 
is 8 a.m. Do you understand? Because at that point in time, I just realized that if I hadn't shown him all the love, or he hadn't shown, it would. I don't. I don't think his death would actually matter. Do you, you understand? Cry? But the death matters because. Did you cry? I did a lot. I'm still crying. I'm in pain. Do you understand? I can't. I don't think I can actually get over it because he was my guy. That's my. You know, the way people see him outside, that's not the way he actually is. So, for me, that actually knows who he is. I know what he means to me. He means, he, he, uh, you know, four 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 is a great guy. Man, I be forty four. My EP. I, I've been recording since day one. I got to the end. It, it, it has always been the plan to drop an EP. But um, there were so many challenges. I think my EP actually took me like a year. Yeah, because I've been actually recording that EP since like March last year, twenty twenty, and I I got to drop it um. September, so it was more than yeah, like a year, six months. Like because we had to like, we had different varieties of songs. Do you understand? So we had to pick the ones that we know that okay, we 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 are, we are going back and forth. Yeah, we're going back and forth because it was a lot of arguments. You know, in a team is always like that. When you're with your team, you know, you guys argue. You have to change a song, pick a song. This one does not agree with the song. No, this is not the jam. This is the jam. Let's, you know. So it took us a while. The process was hard. It was difficult, but interesting, and it was worth it. Yeah. Like arranged and then mixed, mastered. If 45 had not died, the EP would have come out a week after he died. Oh. Or two weeks after he died. I'm. I'm the Obama's legacy has to live on. So, and I think he has already invested so much in me. All I can do, what the least I can do, is to carry on the legacy. Do you understand? He has a son, obviously, so we'll do it together. Yeah, expect um, a couple of videos. I, I, I really want to shoot like all the songs, like videos for all the songs. That's a lot of money. Yeah, because actually, all the songs are relatable from boss my head jamie vanessa people keep requesting people have favorites they have the ones that they like and they want a video for do you understand but expect a couple of videos very soon two or three videos we don't have a favorite that's weird yeah you know why because every process of atm every song here on atm is is a dimension of is is, is a dimension of myself i'm a lover guy that I was going to ask. Do you understand? I'm a lover guy. Do you understand? I and I do. I think people have forgotten the importance of love. What it actually means, and we randomly use these words, you know. So I'm just trying to. I was just. It's just. It was. It, it, it was just an avenue for me to call people back. Yeah, yo, listen, <laughs> jam me now. You know, boss my head. It's all related around love. You know, Vanessa talks about me loving a girl she's the only one that can change my mindset about something you know i'm just so into all that she does she can she can actually tell me to do it's not like there's a particular girl do you understand but like i pick my i pick my songs from movies experiences other people's experiences novels because I, I apart from when i'm not doing music i'm watching movies you read yeah you read yeah i watch movies and i read online most time so if i'm not um, making music, I'm seeing a movie. Um, that was um, Money Eyes, season five. <laughs> you know the vibe. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, so you guys can follow me on Instagram at Ionfair Official and on Twitter at Ionfair underscore Official. Thank you guys. I love you.